One of the things that I don't talk about in this path to greatness is you're going to be alone. Often greatness is a loneliness sport. It's a singular pursuit. Sometimes it can be a team sport, but everyone doesn't have equal participation. There's usually going to be someone who's really going to be stroking it out very hard, very vigorous, very fast to make those moves. Today we're going to talk about how to hustle, build your side business, to grind by yourself, plus ways to mitigate the loneliness. When you start off a business, you're saying to the universe, hey, I have this ideal and I am going for it. That's going to stir up many, many different things. Some people in your family will really support you. Uh, some people will throw shade. Some people like, mm, I don't know about that. So you got to deal with that. Then there's this new thing and then there's you. So there's a lot of emotion that's going into starting up your thing. You could post on Facebook. I'm starting a new business, cricket, cricket, cricket. Unless you have a group of friends who are entrepreneurs. And even then it's still kind of cricket, cricket, cricket. However, if you're like, hey, I got a new job, everybody's like, congrats. Our culture is indoctrinated in you getting a job. That is the way that most people do it. That's the way that most people have done it. So here you are with this strange new thing, newfangled thing. I'm gonna start a business. Mm. It's very disturbing. Let me tell you what you're going to face. First of all, you, and I should say congratulations for attempting to do something that's impossible. The odds are against you. I salute you. I tip my hat off to you because many of you will be successful. Many of you will defy the odds. Many of you will make that thing become something. But in the process, your friendships and relationships are going to change. Part of the reason that well-off people don't hang out with less than well-off people isn't because they're better than these other people. It's the language, it's the verbiage, it's the conversations. If you and all your friends make 45K and all of you drive chargers, you can have great conversations. It's like, hey, I'm doing this with my SRT. Hey, you know, I wanna do this, I'm gonna tune this. Um, I'm thinking about getting the five speed. There's a lot of conversations because at that income level, you're going to be doing a lot of the same things. You're going to have the same dreams and ambitions. Now, let's say someone who's driving the charger starts a business and all of a sudden, three years later, his income is 150, 200 K. He's got a bigger house. He, he no longer wants that Dodge charger. Maybe he's driving the Porsche. You've changed my dude. Not really. You just realize some dreams that have always been there and now you have the means to get them. That's typically what happens when a person who was poor or striving or struggling, then they get the means. Then the first go round of foolishness is to buy stuff to get stuff that you always wanted. You just never could afford. So they haven't changed. You just never knew that person to begin with. Then this is when the separation starts because your conversation is very, very different. Whenever I'm on the plane and I speak to another business owner, we have the best conversations because I understand his problems. He understands my problems and there's no judgment. There's no foolishness. There's no hate. But if I was to chat up someone who didn't have a business, my language changes. I don't talk about certain things because this person's just not going to understand it. It's just not in their lane. The first thing you have to do after you go through the gauntlet, you start getting your business up and running is you're going to have to seek out like minded individuals. You're going to have to network. You're going to have to find people. You're going to have to make introductions. You're going to sometimes it could be just as simple as you pull up in your Porsche and there's a guy at the service station with another Porsche. You need to talk him up, chat him up, talk to him and start hanging out with him because he's going to understand what you're going through without the judgment. And once again, the way that our society grooms us, we are set up to compete against each other in the peacock and the showbird. The second thing you want to do is to keep your really good friends and family members. Everyone has them. I had them. You had them. They're not going to be a lot of them. Okay. But they will be there. Cherish these people and be sure they say, Hey, you know, thanks for being a good friend to show that gratitude. And then the ones who are less supportful or well, less supportive, don't actually get rid of them. Just create a little space. 
you know, if you see them in the grocery store, you see them at the gas station, you, you see them at the little league park, talk to them, chat them up, never talk business. Don't ever talk business with these folks. Don't, if they ask you, hey man, you, I see you got that new Porsche, how you get that new Porsche? Man, I just got lucky. Say that, because he's gonna understand that. That's not gonna make him feel less than. Not that, well, you know, I started this business, then I did this. Because see, once you start talking this um, Chinese arithmetic to someone who doesn't understand Chinese arithmetic, then they're gonna feel some kind of way. And that some kind of way is usually gonna result in envy, jealousy, or downright hostility. So to protect yourself, learn how to use the word game. And it isn't because you're not proud of what you've accomplished. It is as a business owner, as a producer, as a leader, you're one of few. That's the issue. Because this is why you have to become comfortable being alone until you build your tribe of like-minded individuals where you can reach out and you can talk to someone and you can have a conversation without having to censor yourself. Essentially, you're gonna become bilingual or trilingual or, or you be able to speak different languages. You're gonna be able to speak business with business people. You're gonna be able to speak kids with kids people. You're gonna be able to speak life with life people because I look at my videos, I look at posts on social media. When someone is talking about business, not a crappy way of business, but a real bona fide, real strategy, real business talk, no one likes those posts. No one pays any attention to it because you have to think and people are just like, eh, I don't really want to do that. And I really don't want to work that hard. But you, my good friend, you'll like that post, you'll read it and you'll have insights and you'll comment on it and you'll notice there's just not a lot of comments on it unless it's some type of get rich quick scheme or get rich very quickly or accelerated getting rich. Yeah, and then there's all comments, comments just out the window but solid, practical, responsible business advice? No, not that much. Not too many people are listening to that. Kind of like what I said about what was gonna happen with taxes. A lot of people thought I was joking. You have to find your tribe. And then the third thing, you're just gonna have to get used to working alone. And when I say this, you can have a crew of people working for you. They're there with you. They're sharing physical space with you, but you still alone because you're the leader. You are the man or woman on that white horse and they're carrying through their mission that comes from you. So even though you're surrounded by people, you're still alone because they're not like-minded people. One of the things that just really is a challenge for me every time that I hire a crew, I'll get a few people who will buy in and then most folks are just clock punchers. It's like, as soon as it's five o'clock, I'm out of here. And that's typically why salaries are not gonna ever be that high for these people. And I have to keep telling myself, this is your journey, it's not their journey. Once again, whenever I chime in and talk about, you know, business owners asking about some stuff, my conversation, my response is always so different from the typical because, see, everybody wants to be a chief, but there's really only a few chiefs with the magic go, you know, Green Lantern ring. There's only a few people with that ring. There are people who claim to be it. There are people who wear the uniform. There are people that have the fake ring. But there's only a r small group of people who are authentic leaders, producers, and creators. And if you find yourself in that spot, you may think you're a little crazy. You'll have all these ideals and dreams and stuff. And no one actually understands you until you hit it big, then everyone is your friend. And then people are like, I knew you were gonna make it, boy. I knew it, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> you're gonna get all kinds of stuff. Let's talk about the process. When you're starting something new, think in terms of years, not weeks, not months, years. All right, I'm gonna start this thing. I'm gonna give it two to three years. Now, the first year, you should get some indication if this thing's got traction. And traction is, it actually makes money. Uh, one of the things you're going to see that's going to happen here on the internets is all of these businesses that are predicated on potential eyeballs, looks and stuff, they're, they're going to be eviscerated. They're going to be slayed by the dragons and the captains of real Titan because your business, whatever it is, should be able to produce some money unless it's 
a big, large venture capital, biomedical, something like that, which most folks are just not going to start. If you're doing that kind of stuff and you got money to get that started, you're on a whole different level. But for most businesses, you're looking at that two to three year thing. And I remember years and years ago on WGST, this guy was talking, uh, a caller called in and he was giving this guy advice. He says, those first two years are rough, man. But year three, he said, you hanging out there, year four, year five, you're going to be glad you did this. And that's essentially you paying your dues as that producer, that creator. You got to pay dues. See, the universe says, look, I will give you anything that you want. Really? And the universe is like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to give you anything you want. Oh, but there's a bill. There's an opportunity cost. And so many people don't want to pay those costs. They want to cheat the universe. But the universe is very, very interesting how it will sooner or later catch up with those people. Our fearless leader right now, he was propped up by his father. Now all of a sudden, he's realizing certain realities that he's never realized in his life. See, the universe is going to deal with you, whoever you are, wherever you are. It, it, it is. And this isn't some, well, you know, when you die, you go to heaven. No, no, no. The universe is going to deal with you here on this planet. It's going to deal with you where you are. You're going to find yourself in some very strange predicaments. The universe is like, okay, you want this $10 million a year business, okay? I will give you that, but I'm going to need your hard work. I'm going to need your dedication. I'm going to need your focus. I'm going to need your effort. I'm going to need you to experience a little delayed gratification because I am willing to give you this, but I need to know if you're real. And once you prove you're real, Money just starts coming out everywhere. It will surprise you in ways that you can make money. It will surprise you in ways how you're busy. Because see, the thing is that most people miss is these five years of paying your dues can result in a lifetime of comfort and ease. And many people just can't see it. They don't feel it because we're groomed as consumers for immediate gratification. That's why you must move over to the producer side and the creative side. Because, like take painting. I used to paint and draw. Painting and artistic pursuits teach you patience. There are some people who can draw amazingly fast, but they've practiced that for years. When you're doing a piece of art, my, my problem used to be hands. I was really good with eyes and chins. I know that sounds strange. For me to draw a hand, it would take me four or five times as long as to do the rest of the piece. And that taught me to slow down. And it taught me to still be focused while I was moving slow. And that's one of the things that you're going to have to do as a business owner. You're going to, have to be very focused. You're going to have to buy capacity in advance. This is why I'm telling you, if you get in a warehouse and you need 10,000 square feet, rent a 20,000 square foot warehouse, because what's going to happen, the laws of humanity is you're going to fill up their warehouse. You buy 10,000 square feet, you know, let's say you feel you can use eight, so you get a 10,000 square foot warehouse, you will be so shocked at how fast you fill up that warehouse. And this is about expanding yourself. That's another thing that's gonna happen when you're on this path to greatness. And expanding yourself hurts because it's like waking up new muscles and new neurons and new you know, mental connections. It's gonna hurt because it's new. It's like a new limb. It's like a new soul. And once you become expanded, you can expand again and you can keep expanding. And most people don't ne never expand. Once they get to a certain level in life, they just stop. Nothing else enters. It's like, this is good enough for me. And that's all well and good. But once again, my friend, you are a creator and a producer. So that's not good enough for you. That's not to say you better than anyone else. It's just to say you want more than other people do. This loneliness will go away once you know how to bring the right people in. Uh, my most successful business after, Glenn, after GC Solutions was the upscale garage sale. I had a partner. I was never in that alone. And many of you ask, like, how do I find a partner? You don't find a partner. You encounter a partner. This is what you do. You get on your walk, whatever you want to do. You go out there. You start killing dragons. And you look over the side and they're like, oh, there's someone else killing the same kind of dragons. Hey, what's up, Barter? What's up? Hold on. Let me get this dragon real quick. Then, you know, y'all link up, hook up swords, and you start working together. You're not 
going to find the appropriate partner at home. You're not going to find the appropriate partner in your garage. More than likely, you're not going to find the appropriate partner on social media. It's going to be someone out there killing dragons. And then that's how you find the partner. Uh, most of you, I understand, getting on this journey is hard. It's a little scary. But you got to get started. This is how the doors will start open because you open up one door, then you get in this room and it's huge, right? But there's other doors and you open another door and then you go to another room and there's more doors. And each room gets nicer and nicer and nicer. The doors have gold on them. They've got leathers with silver and it just keeps getting nicer and nicer. But that fear of going through that first door keeps so many people where they are in life. It is insane. So that's how you understand this thing about chasing greatness because if your name is Broke Dick Danny and you make $24,000 $24, a year, then you work your butt off and in five years you're making 80, you, you've attained greatness. One of my big issues here is most people don't know what the average income is. Most people don't know what the mean is. You got folks here on social media talking about making a million dollars. It's like you making 10 bucks. There are people who do that. Ain't a lot of them. There are people who make a million bucks an hour. And they've been in the game for 20, 30, 40 years. That's some of the people don't leave out. So you have to be proud of your accomplishments. If you triple your income, you've reached greatness because 90% of America will never ever do that, ever in life. If you lost weight, built a business, had your car paid off, got you a savings account, got you an expense account, no bills, you've reached greatness. See, greatness isn't this super, I am at rapper level. You know, I'm going out buying Bugattis, spending $3.5 million for a car that's like 20K to change the wheels out, to change the tires. That is exception. That's not greatness, that's exceptional. Most of us can attain greatness if we had the right perspective. We're looking to be exceptional while thinking that's greatness. It's not. Once again, you transcend a few classes, you get your look together. You ever notice like uh, they did a comparison photo of Tom Brady during the game when he came into the league. Tom got better looking. And this is something that people who attain greatness, and I'm not talking about surgery, is because they're living well, they're doing what they want, it automatically seems like they've gotten younger because they're happy and they're fulfilled and they're on purpose. Just look around. You'll see these people all over the spectrum who are like this and they're like, wait a minute, you look better now at 40 something than you did at 20 something because they, they went, for greatness and you will see more and more examples of this because people are living longer so I got a question for you you want to be regular or do you want to be great and if you reach greatness do you want to be great or do you want to be exceptional this can be yours if you're willing to pay the price all right so with that I'll see you guys in the next video hey, yo.